Hey, yo, what's going on? It's your boy, Young Doodoo Butt, and today I'm going to be huffing <laughs> vinyl monsters from the Boondock Saints Cinema Creatures series. <laughs> from the depths of vinyl obscurity, Batra and Megaguirus are finally here in the Movie Monster series. Now, Megi was part of Bandai's former line, the Toho Kaiju series, but Batra... Oh boy, Batra hasn't seen a vinyl rep since the Godzilla Collection release in 1992, although the larval form was included in the 1995 Memorial Box. Let's see how Batra ended up first. But before we get too in-depth on the figure, let's take a look at the tag, and thankfully, Batra has only been in one movie, so Bandai can't mess up which design to put on which tag and then call a specific mold a different mold when it's not that friggin' mold! That was not 1992 Mothra Bandai, and you know it. But anyway, the image over here is rather nice, liking the presentation here with the colors and such. Back of the tag is equally as cool with Batra's wing on there. And then we take a look on the inside, and it's pretty much everything that we've seen before. Now let's cage this lantern fly. Oh yeah. Keep it nice and protected from the elements. And now for these friggin' wings. These wings, the tops of the wings, I should say, are absolutely beautiful. I just love how this all turned out. It's a little on the messy side, but it just reminds me of how the prop in the movie actually looked. See, look at that. It's got that nice sprayed on effect. It looks great. And I feel that just beautifully translates into vinyl format. Except it's in the tag. Yeah, they didn't paint everything on the top of the wings, but what is painted remains to be awesome. Just fantastic. Ugh. And the details along the wings are rather nice as well. Looks like a bunch of rods with some fabric stretched over it. Perfect! And you know, got some premium fur detail going on over here on Batra's, uh, stalks, wing, uh, sh shoulders, yeah. Sorry for the butt shot there, Batsy, but we've got some great detail on the thorax and the centerpiece of the insectoid little motherfucker. I don't know insect biology, I'd rather not get close to them, but it is looking rather, rather nice. This random streak of metallic burgundy is rather cool as well. Yeah, the detail over here, yet again, Bandai unmatched with their detail, but who boy, got some messy paint blips over here. And some visible glue. Hmm. Detail on the back of Batra's head is rather nice, and now we will turn the figure to the other side and... <laughs> They only did the red, and they didn't even do all of the red, and this is honestly uh, upsetting. The details on the undersides of the wings are going to be exactly the same as the top side of the wings, just not fully painted, and I don't understand why Bandai didn't put in more of an effort here. I can completely forgive not doing these streaks over here just because of how great these all look, but Bandai, you would have released a great Patra figure had you just outlined everything everything in yellow. Yet again, had these not been painted, I might have made a stink about it, but not as much as I'm making a stink now about there just being red on the bottom of the wings. We'll get into more of that later. But anyway, details over here are fantastic. And now, moving to the legs. The legs are very, very beautifully detailed, obviously not fully painted as to what Batra looked like in the movie. But I gotta give Bandai credit here. These look great. And they're plastic, or a very, very hard vinyl. These are not soft vinyl like the rest of the figure. So it seems that Jet Beta had an everlasting impression on the Movie Monster series because Mega Gears has this too. Those are solid friggin' legs, man. And honestly, it makes displaying Batra a bit on the easier side because you don't have to worry about the legs getting all squishad. Yeah, it doesn't exactly sit uh, evenly like I wish it would, but hey, it's better than dealing with a bunch of articulated legs on the bottom of the figure. And again, these legs are beautifully, beautifully detailed. And we've got a bit of a six pack going on under there. Batra works out. Beautiful, beautiful detail on the bottom of Batra's head over here. Just lovely. And now moving on to the face. The horns are out fitted with a metallic rusty orange look, which, yeah, might not be accurate, but I really do enjoy it. The eyes are nice and piercing solid red with a lot of amazing detail just backing them. I mean, look at that, man. Holy mother of a yes, that looks great. The only thing I'm not too crazy about is going to be the teeth. I mean, the detail is there and it looks nice, but why are they white? Why are they not more aged up, you know what I'm saying? Batra did not have the pearly whites, come on now. 
Speaking of which, we got some spikes on Batra's wings over here as well, which will remain unpainted, unfortunately. But you know, for the most part, this figure looks pretty good. I like it, I do. Unfortunately, I would say the wings are the strongest part about this figure. And I say unfortunately because they're not fully painted and this really does like get under my skin. I'm a little bit bummed by that. Can you imagine having this bright display on both sides of the friggin' wings? But as far as detail goes, Batra does as Bandai always does. I'm going to give old Batsy over here a solid star in terms of detail and uh, half a star in terms of paint. This is magnificent. I love this so much. This is going to stand out on my shelves exponentially. Uh, but why this? Why, 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 why? Dang it, Bandai. Now, normally I would move us over into articulation, but Batra doesn't have anything. Not at the head, wings, ass, or legs. So... Mega Gears time. Taking a look at Mega Gears' tag, unfortunately, this thing was a little beat up out of the box. Damn it. But I like the overall feel they were going for here. This violet esque blue down here surrounding Mega Gears' name and the darker image used. This is a good image of Mega Gears. It just looks a little compressed. Not as clear, you see what I'm saying? On the back, we have Godzilla vs. Mega Gears and its little subtitle that I don't remember the name of, Future Rob. And the tag is cut out to the side of Mega Gears' wing. Opening up the tag, we get what we get. And now we must cage another demon Buzz Buzz Godzilla hybrid to be protected at all costs. Now I'm going to be going a little bit more hard on the motherfucking paint with Mega Gears because I am going to proclaim this now. Movie Monster Series Mega Gears is a fucking figment of reality. That's a good thing. I'm trying to say that it's good. I should just say that it's good. So up first, look at these wings. The membranes were outfitted with a purple metallic paint and it looks magnificent. <laughs> that was just a beautiful touch for Bandai to add and I really couldn't love it any more than I already do. It highlights all the little lines and details over there. Yeah, it's messily applied, but when it comes to metallic paint like this, if it gets a little bit everywhere, that's actually a good thing. And the wings are going to be outlined by this streak of metallic copper or brown, whatever the hell you want to call it. Yet again, highlighting a significant amount of detail there. Just beautiful. And yes, that metallic paint is going to be on both sides of the wings. Both sides. So you're telling me that you could slather some metallic purple paint on both sides of Mega Gears' wings, but you couldn't outline some red streaks on the bottom of Batra's wings? I see you, Bandai. Since we're on the bottom of the figure, here we have the underside of Mega Gears with a doo-doo brown, not so much that metallic copper. Accurate to an extent, and that's going to go all the way up to Mega Gears' throat. Beautiful, beautiful detail, man. I couldn't be any more impressed with this. Yeah, the color really isn't all that appealing, but for what it is, it's awesome. Now back to these legs. Just just like Batra, these are going to be more of a solid plastic or a solid vinyl. They are not squishy. They are hard and these little bits are kind of sharp so they will hurt. I'm currently holding back tears because I just knocked my knuckle against sharpened plastic. It's not fun. That ah, shit! And the detail present on these leggy little legs is quite amazing. Lots of really great line work and such. More than you can even see. And I'm just very much impressed. I'm actually glad this Mega Gears doesn't have the articulated legs like the Toho Kaiju series Mega Gears did. More on that later. But just look at that. All of that detail. Even on the tops of the legs. A1 stuff there, Bandai. A1 friggin' stuff. Moving on to Mega Gears' claws that kind of look like Neo Ridley from Metroid Fusion. <laughs> Loving the details here. These are a lot less sharp looking than the Toho Kaiju series version was, but I'm perfectly fine with that. They're properly outfitted with more of that metallic copper, both on the top and insides of the pincers. And that being said, the detail on them is just as exquisite. I, wow, this is good. Very, very good. Yeah, I'm just gonna have a hard time not totally gushing over this because look at all of that detail, sons, daughters, and pals. This is just lovely. And here we got a better look at the top of these pincers. Just really, really great. Pincers, crab claws, whatever you want to call them. Now in taking a look at Mega Gears' head, uh, it's definitely a lot less sharper than the Toho Kaiju series, much like a lot of things on this figure, but the detail is just wondrous. I love that I can get a profile shot of this gal and just be totally aghast at the fact that this is a bug and Godzilla hybrid thingamabob. And the paint applications of the metallic copper to the very, very red eyes to the bone yellow teeth, just 
lovely. Hell, even the inside of the mouth is friggin' painted. And some of it is on the teeth, but honestly, Megaguirus having some red on her teeth kind of feels rather fitting towards her character. If you've seen Godzilla vs. Megaguirus, you know that she is one mean bitch. Mm -hmm. Like, this head sculpt alone is three solid star worthy, man. That is just awesome. Now moving on down through Megaguirus's neck and back over here, lots of just exquisite detail going on here. The Toho Kaiju series Megaguirus was very, very sharp and the detail was exponential, but the movie monster series version communicates that just as well. The tail is sharp, filled with line work, and it's angular, moving into the Megaguirus body. This is some Lovecraftian eldritch horror type shit here, man. I'm probably not using either of those terms correctly, but this is just amazing. It's like everywhere you look on this thing, you're going to find something new to appreciate, and it's monsters like these that I enjoy getting vinyl figures of the most. And really, I could not be any happier with this Mega Gearus figure. I do wish this was painted though. This would have absolutely been the cherry on top of the perfected cake. But just the fact that we got this material metallic copper moving from the body into the tail and everything, I, I gotta give Bandai my dues. My dues, my love, my appreciation, my everything. Lord knows they already have all my friggin' money, so yeah. As far as paint and details go, I think Mega Gears is totally deserving of two solid stars. I was not expecting the Movie Monster series to deliver this friggin' hard. Sure, the spikes along the tail aren't painted and the orbs on the bottom of her tail aren't painted, but that's here nor there. Wasn't expecting it regardless. And I am perfectly comfortable in saying that this is the definitive vinyl Megagurus figure. Save for that M1 Megagurus. Wow. That thing is amazing. Anyway, unlike Batra, Megagurus actually has some articulation to show off, so let's just do that. Megagurus' arms are perfectly capable of going all the way around. I'm not really going to be doing that because I don't want to scrape off any of this paint. This is the only little bit of articulation we'll be getting out of Meggy, but that's perfectly fine. Minimal as hell, but hey, it works for me. And as compared to the Toho Kaiju series of Mega Gearus, I love that these pincers are a little bit more straight down instead of splayed to the side like the original was. Speaking of which, here she is. I mean, just taking a look at the heads alone, you can see how different these two molds are. Look at how sharp and gritty and angular this Megagirus looks as compared to the more softened vinyl version of Megagirus from the movie Monster series. The teeth are definitely a lot sharper on OG Megagirus as well. And again, I'm really not upset by it either. I think Bandai did a really great job with this Megagirus. Really, really great. Movie Monster series Megagirus is definitely small smaller, but not by too much. You can tell by the head size, you can tell by the tails a little bit. Why does this tail look longer than that? I'm not sure, but the sharpness of these spikes as compared to the more rounded off spikes on the new Mega Gears, it's completely different. They tossed this mold into the Movie Monster series machine and went ham sandwich. And the wings feel a little bit more on the stockier side with the Toho Kaiju series version. Whereas the Movie Monster series version is a little bit more delicate and elegant looking. I mean, just look at that. It's day and night. You can see here, the wings kind of just plug in. There really isn't what looks like to be a socket like on the original. See what I'm saying? They kind of go into a socket. And again, this one's just going to have that sharper detail and that sharper everything else. Now, of course, the major difference on the undersides of the figure is going to be that the Toho Kaiju series Megagirus had articulated legs, while this Megagirus has solid plastic legs. So it really doesn't matter which version of Megagirus you choose to pick up, Toho Kaiju series, theater version, or the new movie monster series version, you're going to be getting a good Mega Gears figure regardless. The crab claws, the pincers, definitely feel more angled outwards on the original Mega Gears as compared to the movie monster series version. I don't know, I just feel the movie monster series version just feels a little bit more accurate in its placement. Either way, these are two different Mega Gears molds. They both offer a bunch of different things within them, so it really doesn't matter which version of Mega Gears you choose to pick up, Toho Kaiju series, theater version, or the new movie monster series version, you're going to be getting a good Mega Gears figure regardless. Now I'm going to do another comparison and then we'll move on over into size comparison. So yeah. As far as Mega Gears goes in comparison to its suit and prop, yes, 
there was a Mega Gearus suit. I feel like I'm the only person in the world who didn't know that. Mega Gearus is actually pretty accurate. The brown or copper was a bit more on the yellow side, but this purple hue was indeed super present. Aside from a few missed bits, I'd say Mega is top of the line perfect. Uh, as perfect as the movie monster series goes, at least. Now, I don't have the original Mega Gearus, but I have seen more than a few pictures, and I'd actually say the movie monster series version is kind of the superior version of the figure. Batra is a little on the lesser side. The spikes along its ass end or thorax aren't painted. The horns are kind of wrong, but I like it anyway. Honestly, my major issues are the underside of the wings and the teeth. The prop had this sprayed on effect that looked amazing, and the top side of the wings are pristine and capture that beautifully, but goddamn the underside. <laughs> big miss. And the teeth, as I said before, I feel like they should have been yellowed up a bit or at least aged up a bit because Batra with the pearly whites, it almost doesn't feel right, you know? Batra and Mega Gearus are two lovely releases from the movie Monster series. The Batra could have been a wee bit better, but I digress. Hopefully a larval form for Batsy over here is on the way soon. Same for Mega Gearus, who I'd say is the better of the two. Her new paint job is just top notch and the new mold ain't so bad either. Bandai, I know you released larval forms of Mega Gearus in that blister pack back in the 2000s, so maybe do that again and blow them up in size, please. Yeah, Batra might be the weaker of the two personally, but I'm still just happy to have a new Batra figure out for a lot of people to get their hands on because again, the last time the Imago Batra had a vinyl rep was in 1992. I have been Shinrob Jira. I do so hope you enjoyed this little double review, double the flappies. And when next we meet, I will be talking about the movie monster series Daimajin! <laughs> it happened. Yeah.